you about to go up on a curve? I think so. Well, I'm trying to keep moving. <laughs> Come on, you go. You've just curbed the, your first... Within two I minutes know, you've curbed look, we're it. stuck here. I mean, Jesus, Richmond's a crap suburb to drive around in. Not as good as Carlton, is it? Dave Hughes, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Sam. I'm honoured to be in the car. Well, I mean, the same spot that so many Carlton, actual Carlton legends have uh, sat and driven you around Melbourne. Well, see, that's humbling because that seems to indicate you've actually seen this, you've seen episodes of this I have, before. mate. I've had insomnia nice. and I've, uh, I've binge-watched this, you know, in hotel rooms in far-flung corners of Australia and overseas, in fact. You're saying this is a, my, these episodes are a cure for insomnia? No, well, they kept me up, I suppose, but um, Thanks, mate. You know, there's something to do while you've got insomnia. Why Carlton? I was five years old. My father broke for the Bulldogs. He was a Footscray supporter, and yeah. so was I went until I was five. And Although my father can't... He's passed away now, but, he's, but in his 60s, he swapped to Richmond, which is weird. That is a weird swap. You get to 60, you break for the Bulldogs. Why would you swap to Richmond? Well, Man, especially, just... especially with a team as equally <laughs> mediocre. Why I know, would you, you... no joy in his life, pretty much, football-wise. But I, when I was five, I was walking home from school. It's 1976. Yeah. I, was walk, I was in prep. I was walking home from school with Phil, Phil Kelly. And Phil Kelly back for Carlton. And if you check your stats, Carlton finished on top of the ladder in 1976. And walking home from school, I don't know, the Bulldogs were nowhere. He convinced me as a five-year-old to, to swap allegiances, so I did. Simple as that. Simple as that. And but and Carlton finished on top that year. Yeah. And we went bang bang. Straight Lost sets. two finals straight out. One of my strongest early memories is lying in the kitchen on my back, kicking the cupboards, and yelling to my mum, "Why does God hate me?" <laughs> it's because because of Carlton straight sets. Because of bang Lost. bang, it was God's fault. Uh, but I used to sit in the sand pit as a six-year-old and listen to the radio and that was my Saturday afternoon sitting in the sand pit listening to the radio <laughs> which don't you think as 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 we've got older that, that's that's currently sounds like a great afternoon I wish I could do that now <laughs> but back then no, but you, you only had one game as well there was, no, there was a chance that your t- game wasn't broadcast so you, you have to st- Listen to some other game and just and just wait for around wait the ground. For around the ground. <laughs> there was no internet. There's no other way to get any update. There was close in the last quarter. A favourite player growing up when you're so five onwards. Who was your first favourite player? I saw Trevor Keogh. Do, do you know all the old boys who have sat there and driven me around? They hold him in such yeah. high regard. I, I remember that I love Trevor Keogh. I mean, Sticks. Oh, I love Sticks. No, I, I, love did sticks. Love, yeah. I just love Sticks. I still love Sticks, don't we? Just love Sticks. God, just I, still love love, I still think he could play. Oh, I mean, yes. Why can't Sticks play? I mean, there was times over the last ten years that <laughs> he's the president. Why don't he just, mate. just half time, just, mate? We had a. We famously had a playing coach. Yes. In why, yeah. wouldn't, why couldn't have been the first team ever to have playing a playing president? president? Absolutely. Right. A number on the back, posters on the wall, badges, duffel coat, any of that stuff? Yeah, I, I had a duffel coat. I had posters. I had a scrapbook, actually. The scrapbook was my favourite thing. I had some great scrapbooks, Carlton scrapbooks. So I think my mum still got them. But, and I'd have, you know, I'd put the footy cards and I'd glue them into the scrapbook. Wow. And because Carlton played finals then, you know, so you'd like... And you know what the best one was grand final. I think it was the Monday after grand final. The the Herald, which to come out at night, would print a colour, colour edition. And the colour edition after the '79 grand final of just whatever photos, Jez are injured. Yep. And the it was just. I mean, that was just magnificent. See, I think I can't. I miss '79, but I've got the colour lift out from the Monday after '81. Yeah. And it's just it's beautiful. Yeah. I'd, I've never seen such bright colours. You played footy. I did play footy. I played four. Uh, Old Collegians, which is a local Warrnambool team, and uh, I dreamed of making the big time. I lost four grand finals in five years. Off your own boot? No, nah, well, no, I would like to think that I, you know, got us close to the line, but not across the line. But I eventually won, won one for, the, for Old Collegians, 1991. No, 92 we won, yeah. When was your last year of footy? 
In 95, I was running around for Bentley in the reserves up in Melbourne, and the captain of the team ran a lap with me, and he said, as we are jogging a lap, he said, why don't you focus on your comedy? And I'm like... <laughs> Playing weight? About 80 kilos, 78 or 80 kilos. I was quite... I was light, I was light. I mean, I had really strong legs, and uh, so I was able to hold my position in marking contests. And so upper body just never really happened for me, upper body. I don't know why, but... Yeah, but, but always had strong legs and, a, and a, a firm rump. So always, yeah, and strong hands as well. Really strong. Not big hands, but not the size of the hand. It's the firmness of the grip. And I had a very strong grip. You know, I, I just asked you to play. I asked you for a number. <laughs> <laughs> playing I know, but it didn't, it didn't sound good. Like current number, weight. No, no, current weight. I was current, going to oh, well, current weight's about 90. Dis, no, 88. 88, maybe, yeah, disappointing. I mean, I certainly would like to get back to my playing weight, and I think it's possible. You're trim? Are you kidding me? You're trim? No, nah, not 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 in a pool when photographed from behind. <laughs> not trim. Just not good. All right. Playing height? I'd like to think that I was 5 foot 11, but probably the tape says I'm 5 foot 10 and a half. So, yeah. Did you, in all your footy career, did you ever lie and say you were a 6 foot? I, I really wanted to be six foot, oh, and I, I mean, we all want to be six foot. Tall, what a we? mystical figure it is, isn't it? Like, <laughs> just, want, I'd love to. My be mother six had foot. a bet with my auntie, and my auntie said that I would get to six foot. And my mother bet my auntie a hundred dollars that I wouldn't get to six foot. So I think she, 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 she secreted it, <laughs> and I got stuck under under it. Oh, it's disappointing. And I took personal responsibility if we lost because, in my mind, I was the difference. So if we lost, I was personally responsible. I like that you were that you were a genuine <laughs> X Factor, but had you had a good awareness of being an X Factor. So if you played well, we won, and if you played uh, poorly, you lost. Yeah, so it was all up to me. I mean, not many people know this because I haven't told everyone in the world, but I kicked 15 goals in an under-18 game once, 15 goals straight. And I was playing centre-half back. I said to the coach, mate, I'm a forward, you're wasting me back there. And he said, I'll give you a go at full forward. I kicked 15 goals straight. It was an under-18 match, and I, I, the runner came out after I was under about 13 goals and said, if you kick two more goals, we're going to get you a slab. And I did. Oh, that's, see, that's good coaching. <laughs> <laughs> that's good coaching. That's, just a, that's knowing your player. <laughs> Let's mention Wayne Harms. Can we just talk about Wayne Harms for a second? For 20 minutes, we can talk about Wayne Harms. I mean, what, he was 1979 grand final, Wayne Harms. Wayne Harms, when he burst onto the scene, was just... Like not tall, short, in fact, but just, just, just full of desire and muscle and just ability. And, he, and could kick at sixty. Just you know how far he's to kick it? I know. Wayne Harms. Wow. Well, there's nothing like it. There's not. There's <laughs> never been anything like him since. <laughs> he doesn't. Again, I don't think he gets the respect he deserves. Wayne Harms. Wayne Harms. If you had to name name one, the best Carlton play you've ever seen. <sighs> I mean, everyone says this, I know, but Kudafidis in that 99 preliminary final, what he did that day was was beyond, beyond, it wasn't real. It was his last quarter, I was at the top of the, one of those stands and I just called him in. I called him in from, he took a mark and I called him in, I reckon, from 200 metres away. I said, Kuda. And I just, he floated down the ground and yeah. he rose above a pack. And I'm, I'm getting goosebumps just, just remembering it it's just my ears are tingling he rose above that pack and to see to see the sadness on those Essendon supporters faces yeah, well that's what I just... got tingled yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was just nothing like it oh, it's, a, it's a perfect storm <laughs> it was just it was cooter yeah, if we if you win on a Friday night how good a weekend is it oh, it's, it's great it's great, great. Uh, I watched Carlton get, I watched I watched Carlton last year in played Geelong for, and I did a gig in Ballarat I was in Ballarat I was Ballarat did a gig on a Friday night drove home Carlton were getting flogged by Geelong I pulled into a, a McDonald's to get something to eat on the way home and then I just heard hang on we're coming back I watched the last quarter and a half on my own in McDonald's Ballarat in a get Geelong game and we lost by like three or four points remember that game the first time and I'm alone me and the guy behind the counter also broke for Carlton and other people couldn't understand why he didn't want to work anymore for the rest of the night. We're just sitting there, meet my McDonald's, and we'd, I had to drive back after that loss, after watching the game on my own and that, with the guy from behind the counter. It was just, did, the, did the free apple pie help at all? No, I didn't get a free apple pie either. Was, but, but that was 
Yeah, I don't know what the question was, but that was, <laughs> that was, a, that was a bad memory. But I lived for footy. I, I was my dream of playing AFL ended when I was 25, and I was in the reserves for a suburban league. But um, I got headhunted to play in a higher league. Yeah. And a, a coach. A what's form, a league? Come on, what's the Hamden league? league? Okay. Which is you know Jonathan Brown's league, and his uncle Noel Mugovan, who used to play Fitzroy. He recruited me to, or he tried to recruit me to South Warnable. And um, when he, he said, mate, I saw you playing, and you know, you could, you, you might be able to make the, the AFL. And, um, and he, you know, that was, that really, words really stuck with me. I never made the AFL, I didn't even make the handball league, but. Um. <laughs> so, uh, with the greatest respect, he had no idea what he was talking about. Worst recruiter in the history of suburban footy. I still think that he was. <laughs> <laughs> this coach, oh, yeah, Nanny, I got a premiership, not with me and the team. I didn't that game yet, but... Dave Hughes, uh, you're a great Carlton man, and thanks so much for your time, mate. I appreciate Good it. Good on you, Sam.